Hi everyone, it's Dennis Yusuf here from IJT and I have got Darren Hunter with me and we are here for the Top Growth Podcast Show. Darren, we have been doing the Top Growth Academy and how good has it been? Like seriously, it has been so much fun from a trainer's point of view doing the academy because I mean it's a 12 part series, this academy and we're halfway through it now and what I love about it is the way that we bring the people in to the training with us at the end. So we go through the training, they can ask questions because it's being, um, it's live, but they actually get to be part of the training. And, and then we get to brainstorm, put accountability on them. How good is that? Well, we've had some, we certainly have had some really good engagement. And I, I guess this particular session, which is, which is session seven of the Top yeah. Academy, you did it yesterday, so, so it is fresh. It got probably the most attention because what you're going to learn in this podcast session, everyone, is probably the, the best rent roll growth strategy that you can get traction from. Now, Julie Collins, when she implemented this into the rent roll that she was with uh, up at Altitude, um, they were doing up to 10 properties a month just from this one strategy or I remember Amy from Toowoomba in her first eight weeks she signed up 17 properties and she didn't have a sales team she's property management only we're just hearing so many results over and over again with the people that implement and that's what we got yesterday in that engagement with with the at the end of the session there um, because people realize that this is a gold mine and everyone today we're going to explain how it works so Dennis well, it's, I, I, implementing. it's about implementing it, it right that, that's the a lot case. of people listen they go wow yeah. that sounds good but then the business of the world takes over and that is the reason why largely you're not growing it's not because not it's about what you don't know you probably do know particularly around all the strategies if you went through the top growth podcast show all the strategies are there it's just your lack of time to learn and implement, all right? Implement is the word. Now, Dennis, I'm going to hand the reins back over to you in a sec, but it has to be said, this is one of your greatest legacy strategies because a number of years ago, you got challenged by a national property management trainer to change the culture of when a property is sold, a real estate sales agency sells a property to a, a new property investment buyer that that property normally gets transferred with the trust that's already been established to the rent roll belonging to that same real estate agency. Yep. That's yep. traditionally happened for eons. Yep. And well, this I mean, strategy yeah. is the first time where that's actually been changed. You've stopped that process from happening. Well, well, that conversation, would you believe, I, I, I still remember it like it was yesterday, um, was walking through Darling Harbour and they said, Dennis, how are your numbers going? And and it was it was October, right? It was in October. And I said, oh, you know, I've listed 190 properties this year so far. And, and they're like, wow, like that's great. And I'm going, no, it's not. Like I, I've got so many more leads that I, 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 I should be listing. I'm just sick and tired of making these phone calls. And they say, oh, I bought it off this person, so I gave it to them. And that's when they turned around and said, if you think you can crack that one, let me know. So <laughs> and you did. And you did. <laughs> so from that point, the yep. next three years, you went and signed up 745 properties just from this strategy because you cracked the code. So yep. everybody, listen to the, the strategy here because this is a total game changer, the Investor Support Services. So Dennis... Let's start with base one, part one. How how does it work? Let's give get, get some background going. Yeah, totally. Well, I mean, that there's about there's five different points that we're going to cover here. And Darren, this is a podcast where the idea is just to motivate and get people engaged. And you know, uh, if people want you know more training on it, they need to be part of the academy. They need to have that coaching. By all means, give it a crack. And I'm not holding back. They're going to learn and they'll be able to implement straight away. Uh, however, over a podcast, we don't have enough time for me to go into great detail. I need three days in your office. If I know. You really I really want to break these down, right? Three days because it didn't. I, this didn't happen overnight. But I'm I'm going to break it down into segments, okay? If that's okay. And you know, it really comes back to you know 
having the confidence and not expecting results straight away. The, the works of the investor support service is you, it's about being proactive and going out there and chasing for business. When you're being reactive, those leads are ready to go. Like Darren, if you're a, a potential landlord, you're ringing me up just as you purchased a property or you're upset with your property manager, you're ready to make a decision. The investor support service is about putting in the work now and you're gonna get the results in four weeks, eight weeks, 12 weeks, even six months down the track. So, so Dennis, really, this is not waiting for the phone to ring. It's picking up the phone and um, and creating uh, warm leads, yep. but stoking the pipeline. Everyone understands it's a sales term, but you've got to get your pipeline stoked. This is no different from a salesperson just starting that they've got to go out and do prospecting and all of those sort of things. Um, and it takes, they say, three to six months before that salesperson really starts to get anywhere. This is no different. So it is yep. not a long game, but it's a mid game where you've got to, you've got to be chasing down and creating warm, consistent leads using this process. Darren, forget about cold calling. Cold calling is dead for property it management. It is, and this isn't cold calling. It's no. actually calling leads that yep. are coming into your office right now, right under your nose that you didn't even realize that were there. People that are the most warmest, um, ready-to-go leads that just like rainwater, Dennis, you know, it comes out of the sky in a storm and it generally goes into the roads and it just goes down the stormwater drain and out to sea and it's all wasted. These are leads that are getting wasted in an office right now. Darren, there's two reasons why a business doesn't grow. The first reason is there's just no leads coming in. Zero, nothing is happening. Now, the second reason is there's potentially leads coming in. However, they're not converting those leads into management. Now, there's different levels of converting. There's converting the lead to the appointment. Then there's converting the appointment to the signature. So you've got to identify that. But Ultimately, the investor support service, what it does, it identifies the blockage of leads. People don't know that there's all of these leads that they've potentially got access to, or they can gain access outside of their business and grow so many different funnels to get more leads and convert them at the same time. So Dennis, let's just let's just get into this, all right? And and let's smash out this podcast and give some really good meaty nuts and bolts. Where are these leads coming from, and where are we going to find them right now if they're sitting under our nose? Where are they? <laughs> you know what's so exciting, and I love this. And 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 that challenge was accepted when um, I was told, you know, if you think you can break this, do it. Well. The, the leads are already, especially if you've got a sales um, division within your office as well, there's so many leads coming in. But predominantly, most of the time what happens, if you're looking at a timeline of growth of when a um, investor is looking to purchase a property, you're not told about it until the bottom tier section. We need to be at the top of the Christmas tree. Okay, like the, the, the pyramid on the, on the food chain you know, we're meant to be only eating a little bit of the chocolate, but we want more chocolate, right? <laughs> we want more chocolate. Everyone wants more chocolate. So those leads are already coming in because there's investors that are putting inquiries onto properties, right, through your website inquiries, whether it's your own website, realestate.com.au, um, domain.com.au, .co.nz, you know, whatever country we're in, wherever the houses are being posted and listed on a website, right? There is an inquiry that's coming in on those properties. There might be a property for sale. There might be 10 website inquiries that are coming in. Three of those 10 could be investors. Now, what basically happens, Darren, is those three leads go into someone's email, right? That goes to the salesperson who's selling the property. That particular salesperson may tell you about one person that buys them, but what about the other two? But what's happening with those other two? And I'm being kind when I say there's only three, and there's more than 10 inquiries that come over the life cycle of a house that's selling. You know, over the life cycle, if there's 50 inquiries on a property to purchase, especially if it's an iconic property, ideal 
four bedroom, two bathroom, two garage, etc. You know, or it could be a unit complex, depending on what the demand is in your local area, you're going to get more investors. But if there's 10 email inquiries, just email inquiries, then there's a whole pile of leads that you as the BDM property manager, investor support service agent, could be calling and starting to build a relationship with. So right? Dennis, already you're talking about someone in property management getting hold of those same email inquiries. So old school thinking here, Dennis, and I've got to throw some old school rocks at you. There's uh -huh. a lot of bosses go, well, I wouldn't want BDMs or property managers getting those sales inquiries in their inbox. Because that's what we're suggesting here is a setting change in the back of the property marketing portal where a BDM gets those same sales listings so they can actually see the language that people yep. use. Hey, look, I'm after the rent return of this property. That's clearly an investor as opposed to people, owner occupiers and things like that. And already salespeople would be thinking, well, I don't want my sales inquiries going to property management. Dennis, what's your response there? Well, do they want to grow the rent? Well, if they've got a BDM, are they wanting to grow the rent roll or are they just going to let those leads go out? You've got access to having sales agents within your office that are dealing with all of these investors. Like I said, there could be 10 investors on one property. That sales agent is only talking about one. Those nine agencies might buy off rival agents. Don't you want to try and manage those nine as well? Yeah. So nine, you know, if you've got a good BDM, they should be getting a minimum 80% conversion rate on appointments, right? That's that's at least eight they should be getting out of those 10, right? Plus the one that the salesperson gives you because they purchased from your office, well, right? The point is 90% of those investor inquiries, not the total inquiries, but the property investor inquiries that come in will probably buy elsewhere why wouldn't you want to stop them giving that rental property to that agency just because they bought the property from them? People, yeah. this is what we're talking about is that we're swinging that management over to you by establishing a connection much earlier than what your rival property management department or business will, will be able to start that relationship. You're getting in first because you're chasing down the investors before they go and buy that property, most likely from one of your rival sales agencies. So Dennis, okay, so let's say we've got now the emails coming in um, and we've got, what is some of the typical language? We've it's already hinted on it. What's some of the typical language in these emails? Can a BDM or a property manager go, yeah, that's definitely an investor. I need to connect with them. Yeah, well, I mean, you already said one, like, that, you know, they might just identify that they are an investor. You know, someone might ask, is this the updated rental opinion on the property or can I get an updated rental opinion? What's the ROI? It could be the question, which is rent on return, you know, um, rent on investment, sorry. But, you know, that they could be asking a, a, an easy question about what's the percentage return on investment. You know, there's different ways they might want to, that they could be simply asking uh, what are the strata fees or the body court fees because they already know what the rent return is. So, you know, you've got to be mindful of that as well. Um, I used to have questions if it was rented out today, what the, would be the rental asking price? There's quite a few different questions that they're asking. And, and again, the sales agents might go and say to a, a property manager, hey, um, Darren, um, what's the updated rental opinion on this? But they're just answering the question. And they're not telling the BDM or the property manager, hey, I've actually got an investor that's asking me questions at the moment, would love your help. Um, you know, would you, are you able to give them a call and answer some of these questions? Ideally, that's speeding up the process of, of um, you know, selling the property as well, utilising what's in your office to, to use. So, you know, and, and again, if there's check your legislation, if you've got like a, a referral program within your office, a sales agent, they could be, instead of just getting one referral from the property they sell to an investor and they're dealing with nine, 10 others, they could have a streamline of income coming in because your BDM is doing the investor support services, staying in touch with these um, investors, even though they're buying off someone else, you're in front. They're going to be listing properties over your rivals, okay? Because as a BDM, you're building rapport with these people and you are, you know, they're potentially going to be, 
um, you know, getting three to four properties per property that your office is selling. So it's a good streamline of income. That could be yes, let, let, let's keep on moving on. What, how do we, okay, so now we've identified through language, it's very easy yep. to see this as property investor language and, and a response as opposed to an own occupier. Okay, so we've identified out of these inquiries um, that it's a property investor. What, what, how are we going to connect? What are we going to say? What, what's the next step? What, what, you know, what, 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 how do we do this? Hi, George. My name's Dennis. I noticed that you put an inquiry on 52 ABC Street. I'm from the property management department. You're asking questions about rental returns. That's my area of expertise. Uh, I can help give you um, ascertain what the best potential rent return is on this property, plus any other property that you're looking to purchase, regardless of offers that you purchase an, uh, uh, an investment of, I'm here to help. Because it's really important to be speaking with somebody who knows the statistics and data of rent returns and what tenants are looking for. And I'll give you those rent returns, especially information if you're looking to purchase a property. It may not be in a sought after area that may take longer for that property to lease out. It's great information. And, and look, it's all about building that rapport, letting them know you're from the property management department. Doesn't matter who they purchase from. Darren, it's easy to say the script, but you've got to follow them up. You've got to get emails from them. You've got to start selling your services to them. Uh, and then, you know, stay in contact with them. Call them every couple of weeks. How are you going? Did you look at any properties this week? So I guess, there's I guess your call I and your follow through, right? I'm just going to jump in here, everyone. Dennis, of course, because he created this system and actually discovered this method, there's a whole series of letters and forms and checklists that have been written. Members, just simply go to the IGT Academy in the membership dashboard. Look out for the Academy button. Go to Top Growth. Uh, it's actually session seven, and you'll see a button there, download letters, forms, and tools. All righty, so if you had to get those letters, forms, and tools. If you're not a member, um, just go to igtmembership.com and join, um, and you can get a lot more in-depth uh, information about how this procedure or this system and others strategies work um, and getting access to forms, letters, and tools there as well. So Dennis, okay, so all right, we start a connection. We've, we've got a relationship going. How does that turn into new management? Well, like I said earlier, Darren, the idea is to stay in touch with these people. It's to stay in contact with them, build rapport and showcasing that you are the market expert in your local area. You know, you should be giving them um, market updates on the latest statistics and data. Or it might be, you know what, right now, I know you're looking at a four bedroom home, but there's a huge demand right now for three bedrooms or there's a huge demand. So it's giving them this information. Tenants right now, they are demanding air conditioners or that, you know, so it's giving them this information. You know, you might have an article that you've written or a video that you've done, an educational video, or it could be information from, um, you know, uh, about marketing, how to prepare the house for rent. Whatever the case is, you've got to be updating them and staying in touch with them. And there is everyone also members, you've got uh, just go to the content button. We've got 10 quality property investor articles already written from you for you. Just download them the word document, just tailor them, but they have been designed for this very thing to give to property investors who are out in the market at the moment. So uh, Dennis, now um, just as an FYI, um, you met with Box Brownie the other day. All righty. And mm -hmm. we both met with Box Brownie. Um, that snap, snap, snap app for iPhones, um, I was really blown away from a property marketing point of view. What was your response though? What was your impression? I think that this box brownie app thing that they've got, this snap, snap, snap is revolutionizing the way that property managers can market their property. It's the next big thing, whether you want to just enhance the photos or you want to take out furniture, especially if you've got tenants that are still in the property through an app on your phone, you can now make photos look professional and even enhance them, taking things out. You might want to um, have a, a dusk photo as well. You can do this with property management and make your marketing um, so you're marketing a house that's not going to be a needle in a haystack anymore. Yours is going to look the best in your marketplace. 
What right. I like is the self-serve digital digital staging as well. It's just so easy with this app. So these are the sort of things, everyone, that certainly in your communication, your initial connection with property investors, um, and as you're developing the relationship, you show them how well you market the property because right now they're thinking about buying the next property, but then they're really going to be thinking about, I've got to get this property rented out to the best tenant with the best rent in the fastest possible time. And you're already watering that by showing them your property marketing. So check out the app on your iPhone, uh, Snap, Snap, Snap app and go and check it out. It is very, very revolutionary and self-serve, all right? You're not going off to some expensive service. It's pay as you go as well. I like that, Dennis. You're not paying monthly membership fees. Um, so it's a it's a real game changer. So Dennis, I think that's in a rough nutshell. Is there anything else you want to add before we wrap up this podcast? I mean, Darren, do we, do we, I think we need to do a part two because we've only spoken about one area. This is potentially a Yeah, I think so. It is. It's very big. Yep. I know that we're cutting it short, but also we've got to keep our podcast length short. So everyone look out for part two of this episode mm. uh, where we're going to reveal a lot more. It really is exciting, particularly with the way that Dennis has created this strategy. No one else has ever done this before. It's so obvious to be able to it's start a relationship with a property investor before they actually buy the property. And when you're in there first, you're leaving your rivals empty handed. They're wondering what the hell happened. Um, and you're dominating the growth in the area, just like Dennis did. I mean, Dennis, how what were some of the complaints that your boss got from your rivals when you did this? Oh, I had um, one principal ring, Peter, um, saying, how did Dennis get my database? You know, he's calling all of my clients. And I had salespeople um, actually having words to me when I was at the pre-settlement inspections of, of properties they had sold, but I was taking over as the management. So, you know, it, it, it's fun. I mean, I'm competitive, but that just, you know, drives me even more when I'm seeing someone doing really well as a BDM. That, that's what the BDM role is. It, it's a sales-driven position, you know. But more importantly, Darren, um, in, in the next strategies, what we're going to talk about are other ways as well and, and where else we're going to identify these leads and get them and, and convert them. But, um, yeah, there, there's so much to cover. Darren, just while we're doing the, um, the Top Growth Academy um, this week, I had someone sitting in ring me up and say, Dennis, I need you to come in and coach my team how to do this. And they only heard the last 10 minutes of a one-hour session, right? So everyone here, you've only heard a small component of that as well. There's so much more to do, and I'm excited to share it in the next, um, in part two. Now, Dennis, how do people book into your diary if they want to talk to you about coaching? I've forgotten the Calendly link. Do you remember what it is? GrowMyRentRoll.com, grow is it? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> GrowMyRentRoll.com. It's a go, GrowMyRentRoll.com. If you want to chat to Dennis about not just um, hearing about it, but if you're serious about getting results and you want some accountability um, and someone to explain this strategy in all its depth and keep you accountable to make sure it actually happens and it doesn't become something you leave on a shelf and then it just you just forget about it, um, go to growmyrentroll.com uh, grow and, and that will book you straight into Dennis's diary. All right, now, if you haven't got Dennis's book as well, The PM Lead Secrets, um, just go to pmleadsecrets.com. The book is free. Just pay for shipping. That's 40 plus ways to grow your rent roll, get warm, consistent leads without needing to rely on a sales team. Really, really important. So Dennis, great podcast. We'll make a part two. Everyone will see you in the next episode. Take care. Thank you, everyone.